Most people are aware that we're facing water shortages, but not everyone has connected the dots to see that water shortages means food shortages. There are a few commodities that are more underpriced than water. And it's because of the historical situation. At one time, there's more water than we could ever use anyhow in most of the world. As the demand for food has increased, so has the demand for water, because 70% of all the water we use in the world is used for irrigation. So the growing demand for food drives up the demand for water and makes it more valuable. In 2007, we saw world food supplies tighten and food prices began to rise. A number of countries, exporting countries, in an effort to try to control their domestic food price inflation, restricted export. What happened then was that importing countries suddenly realized they could not depend on the market, as they historically had, uh, because exporting countries, when things got tight, they had learned would restrict exports. So this is when the importing countries began looking for land in other countries that they could buy or lease on which to produce food for themselves. And while we talk about land grabs or land acquisitions to describe these trans transactions, um, they're actually also water grabs because land without water is not very useful in producing food. Two of the countries that have been favorite targets of these land grabs, uh, Ethiopia, and the Sudan. These two countries occupy 70% of the Upper Nile River Basin, and it is the Nile that Egypt depends on for all of its agriculture. It basically doesn't rain in Egypt, and so uh, the Nile River is the lifeline for Egypt. Egypt either imports its wheat or imports the water to produce its wheat. But suddenly, with all these land acquisitions upstream, the amount of water reaching Egypt in the Nile River is going to go down, down, down. And Egypt has no place to go, so it's in a very uh, difficult situation. But variations of this will be taking place, or are taking place with the Euphrates River, uh, which is shared by Turkey, uh, Syria, and Iraq. Uh, the Mekong River with China controlling the upper waters of the Mekong, building dams and so forth, which means that the downstream countries like Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, um, will be getting less water. Food has become the new oil. Land has become the new gold. And so we're seeing this high stakes game now of, of trying to see who can, who can find land where. And initially it was national governments doing this, but as more and more people realized that land and the water to go with it are becoming scarce resources, suddenly we find uh, investment banks investing in land. Not that they ever plan to farm it, they're speculating. It represents a growing competition and it represents a new mood in international affairs of every country for itself. And that's politically dangerous. The bottom line is world grain prices and world food prices are rising. Grain prices today are double what they were a decade ago, and there's little prospect that they're going to go back down again. The Mayan civilization was very successful. At least three million, something even 13 million people at its peak. Um, but then the eighth and ninth century, uh, deforestation and soil erosion began to undermine the food supply. The individual cities in the Mayan empire began, began competing for the available food supply even fighting over it, and then the whole thing collapsed, and you go there now, and it's, it's all jungle. Now we think, you know, being in the modern world with advanced technology in the early 21st century, that that couldn't happen to us. But it can. Mm -hmm.